thank you for joining me. I'm on the central line today and I'm going right out to the end to Epping. I haven't, don't come up here that often but I always enjoy a trip because as you can see we're kind of travelling through pretty much open countryside so it's quite an attractive part of the London Underground on that side. It's, I might go for a walk up there on that hill one day, it looks quite, quite a nice place to watch a few trains. So you probably gathered the reason we're going right to the end of the central line is because we're going to the Epping Ongar Railway which um, I haven't been to for a while. I've called in a couple of times. I went on it back in about 2005 when it was a DMU and it had the finished steam loco. So I haven't had a chance to ride on it since then. So that's what we're going to today. This section of tube line though was originally a railway line. I'm just going down the M25. This is the only tube line that goes under the M25. The only other underground line to go on the M25 is the Metropolitan once you get past Rickford. So the section of the line we're travelling on now was opened by the Eastern Counties Railway in 1865 and the terminus was Epping and then its successor, the um, Great Eastern Railway, extended the line to Ongar in 1865. Sorry, this line opened in 1856. It was extended to Ongar in 1865. And the um, Ongar Railway, although it kind of carried on, was always sort of seen as a bit of a branch and then eventually it became part of London Underground in 1949, I'm pretty sure it was. But what happened was the goods yard stayed open, so steam trains would have still worked along here up until about 1966. They might have become diesel towards the end, but we've probably been at night long now, I'm just going to look out here. There's a Lindt, um, London Underground logo. No and it wasn't yellow when I last came, they painted it yellow. So just coming into Epping, the Ongar branch would have carried on just beyond the station up there. So we won't get to travel on those hundred or so yards of track, but we're going to travel on as much of the Epping Ongar railway as we can. So here we are, we've arrived at Epping. So what happened was once the um, so I'll just show you how. If you look up here, you can see they've put like stops in, so trains don't actually ever now go beyond there. But beyond the bridge, the line to the left is reversing and diving, the line to the right going up the hill, that is the old Ongar branch. So not particularly, so very occasionally trains have still traversed on and off the Ongar branch when they when they took the preserved um, stock that used to work on the branch up until it's closed. So it closed to public in 1994. It was electrified I think in about 57. Prior to the electrification, this line was electrified, but prior to the electrification of the Ongar branch, London Underground had to hire a steam train from British Rail. So steam would have worked through here up until up into the 50s. Now this station is a bit of an unusual one because there is an entrance there but I don't think it's ever open. So this lattice footbridge is inside the ticket barriers, but the concrete footbridge there is outside the ticket barriers. But standing up here, we get a nice view of the station. So occasionally trains do come in here at busier times. I won't go down there because um, station staff are already looking at me thinking, what's he doing on that footbridge? So what we need to do now is get out. We need to find a bus. Not any of those buses. There's a bus that's going to take us to the Epping Ongar Railway. So um, let's go and see where that is. So we've got to get out of the station first. So. so here's my ticket. I've got a travel card. I like having a travel card because I can get on and off stations as I wish. So if I want to just go on a station to look at trains, um, it works. It doesn't work with an Oyster card. So here we are. Here's ticket barriers. I think I need to get out here. So as we come out of the station now, come out through the ticket office. The bus to take us to the Epping Ongar Railway is due to arrive here, so we've just got to wait now for the bus to arrive. What I'm going to do, I'm going to walk across the road so you can see the station building. So it's going to be quite an interesting day. I think they're running a few different trains on the Epping Ongar Railway, so I'm looking forward to it. So once the bus has arrived and taken us there, I'll show you what we see on the Epping Ongar Railway. But there we are, there's Epping Station.
quite a nice church. Um, yeah. Did we drive down here? Yeah, in my larder. Is everyone on the bus was taking this? Yeah. Yeah. So the bus has arrived, we're now travelling, just travel through Epping Town Centre and we're on our way to North Weald. I bought my ticket, so this ticket is for the bus and for both trains they're running on the Epping Ongaro. It's quite scenic out here, quite attractive. A bit of common land. So although we've come here on the central line, which is part of London Underground, we are actually out in Essex now. We're no longer in Greater London. So when you travel to the Epping Ongar Railway by train, obviously you go up to Epping like I've done today, and then you get this bus, so you get kind of get the best of both. You get a pleasant vintage bus journey through Essex and then you get a train journey when you get to North Weald. So I think it's going to be a um, very interesting day. So we've arrived at North Weald. We actually arrived on the other bus, but I went and had a look in the shop and the other bus drove off. So um, there's two buses out. You can hear, you won't be able to see it, but you can hear aeroplanes. That's because we are very close to North Weald Airfield. So there's the gift shop there. Now it's looking quite exciting. I can already see steam in the distance. There's that class 37, about where that is, there is a little industrial loco built by Hawthorne Leslie called Isabel and she's going to take us for a brake van ride up into Epping Forest. So we arrive here, this is the main part of the station. That way is looking towards Ongar, single box. And we have a class 47, which I'm really looking forward to arrive behind, because that's going to be a winning loco for me. So um, we just have a walk up here. So this is a class 47 with the great ride floppy on the side. So that is the livery of the class 47 which worked in Scotland. So we're going to have a trip on that later, but first we're going to have a, a brake van ride in this shark brake van behind this Hawthorne Leslie locomotive, Isabel. So I'm um, really looking forward to this. It's a winning loco for me. It's also the second locomotive of the year I've had called Isabel. The other one was at the Amerton Railway, two foot gauge loco. Now let's just have another, we'll go around that side, have a better look at Isabel shows, considering this is part of London Underground in my lifetime, how rural it is, it's all fields beyond there. Just beyond the end of the platform was the only public level crossing on the London Underground. It was a bridle path, which um, goes off up into the fields. There's some more stock up there. We'll go and have a look at that a bit later. And there's a Mark II uh, K1 
carriage in Anglia Railways livery, a buffet. So I might go and get a cup of tea there later. Go through here. I'll give you a better look at the, the brake van. So this is there. You can sit in here and have a cup of tea. It's a, as I just said, it's a Mark II buffet. So this would have worked between London, Liverpool Street and Norwich. And the trains that replaced them, the Mark III, they're about to be replaced by the Stadler Flirt unit. So here's a shark brake van. I know I did show you this a moment ago, but I thought I'd show you again. Because here we can get a better view. If you look down there, that is a ballast plough. So when they're dropping ballast, that goes down and that pushes the ballast off the rails and into the area between the sleepers. So let's just have a look at Isabel again. It was built in 1919. I just read that admittedly off the works plate. And as you can see, she's 100 years old, still going strong. So she's taking people up the hill, up there, over to the other side of the M11, into Epping Forest. So we're going to go for a ride on her. Now, getting ready for tomorrow, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, but for those who visit the railway tomorrow, they're going to be lucky enough to have a trip behind Pitchford Hall. I have had Pitchford Hall. I had her on the main line between um, Stratford Avon and um, Turner Hill. And there's also an O3 shunter behind her. And there's this class 37 here. I'll have to come to one of their diesel events to get that logo for Hawley. So, it's now time for us to go and um, enjoy our brake van ride. So we've had our brake van ride behind Isabel, it's really nice going up into the forest, um, a little bit cold on the way back but then it is winter so I can't complain. I did like a driver's eye view, I'll upload that as a separate video from Cooper Sale, the little hamlet just up in the forest back to here so look out for that, there'll be another video, a driver's eye view from Cooper Sale to North Weald in the Shark brake van. I'm now, as you can see, I'm on the more conventional passenger train sitting in a Mark II carriage. It's class 31 on the front and it's going to take us up beyond Cooper Cell, up as close as the railway can go to the boundary with London Underground. So looking forward to that. So that will be beyond Cooper Cell, be a little bit of new track for me. And then after that, the 47 that we saw when we arrived here is going to take the train all the way down to Ongar. So I'll show you Ongar station. So when we get to Epping Forest, I'll just give you like a view like this out the window so you can see what there is um, there's no station so we won't be getting out and then um, we'll have a look around the rest of the place and as it has just been Christmas the train is still beautifully decorated with Christmas decorations so um, yeah time for me to have a bit of a diesel bash we've had our steam ride as well though which so it's been a great day so far interesting ride up through Epping Forest behind the Class 31. This is as far as we're going. I believe we're quite close to the station, um, Epping Underground Station, not sure exactly how close but we're at the limit we can go so that's the view on that side. I can just see some houses in the distance. If you look over here, I'll show you, look, show you out the window, you can see it's all you know fields etc and um, looking that way See the whole train. So we're now going to travel. The 47's holding us. We're going to travel behind the 47 
all the way down to Onga. So now I've got half a half an hour's ride sitting in a Mark II coach behind a diesel. Reminds me a bit of the days when the 47 still worked across country trains. I remember sitting in a train hauled by a class 47 and Mark IIs, although they were the air conditioning type rather than these ones where you can open the window. So yeah, we're now going to Ongar. We've arrived at Onga, so I'm gonna get off the train. Always enjoy um, when you get a drop light window, you have to put your hand out like this and open the window. Not many trains you can do that now. So here we are, this is Onga station. There's the signal box just there. There's some carriages here, there's an old um, Southern EMU carriage. And there's some Mark 1s here under restoration. Let's go and have a look at the loco. So we've come on the 47. The 31 took us up to near Epping station and the 47 was on the rear and has hauled the train all the way to Ongar. We left the 31 behind at um, Northfield. So there's a bit of a yard there, quite a few carriages awaiting restoration. This carriage is a Mark 1. This was the only Mark 1 carriage oh, in our train. The rest were, there were two blue and grey Mark 2s and there's um, a Mark II brake carriage. So this is where the old goods yard would have been. If we go up here, past the ticket office, we can go and have a look at the, at the loco. It's just bought us here, here we are. I know we saw her earlier on at, um, at Northfield. A 47 hall train is authentic memory of childhood because I remember 47s working the cross country trains with a load of Mark IIs. So she will run round her train and then um, we will go back to Northfield. I'm just going to show you something up here. There's a couple of other things on display. Um, when I do videos in mainland Europe, I sometimes we go to a railway station, we find a plinth loco. Plinth locos don't really exist so much in Britain. Well, they do exist, but they're rare. But here's one here, plinth diesel loco. I mean, in Britain, I think the main reason they don't exist is because a lot of them are looked after and kept running. But here's a plinth loco. So maybe one day this loco will run again. It's a little industrial diesel. But it's um, yeah, quite a nice little gate garden. The 47 is going to run round her train, she's going to come like literally right up to where we are now, so I'm going to let you watch that. That is quite a tight run round loop they got there, but well, there's still some track to spare. 47 will go round to the other end of the train where it takes us back to North Wheel. So I shall let you see that. The driver, he, he's sport the train here, of course, he's going to get out and walk to the other end and then he'll drive the loco forward.
then the gentleman here, the one in the orange jacket, he's now going to change the points. So the next train, the point is set the next train to come forward, which will be a few hours later. So I'm going to go another wander around and I'm going to get back on the train ready to go back to Northfield. Back down on the platform, a couple of things I want to show you. So a moment ago, we were up there, there's the Plinth Loco. This railway is possibly unique in that it is measured in kilometres and mileposts. So all railways when they were built in this country were always built in miles. So it has mileposts which are done from Liverpool Street. So just before Northfield Station you've got milepost 19. I'm not quite sure which mile, what the nearest milepost to here would be but probably be around milepost 22 maybe. But when it came part of London Underground it was measured in kilometres. And they start here, see just there, that zero, zero, that is kilometre post zero. And then it's measured in kilometres that way, all the way down the whole central line. Even today, the central line is measured in kilometres from Ongar rather than from Epping. So you go that way, the kilometre posts, are go kilometres are going up, Come and coming this way, the, kilom uh, the miles are going up. So as we go that way, the miles are going down and vice versa. Um, and another thing that happened here, a loco once ran away and hit the buffers in 1934. As you can see, there's a picture of the derailed loco. Um, must and um, yeah, a bit of an incident that happened. And there's the rescue operation. So let's hope nothing like that ever happens here or anywhere else for that matter. Again, right, I think I really ought to go and get back on the train because soon the train will leave for North Wheel. But yeah, what a lovely country station this is and it's hard to believe even in my lifetime this is all part of London Underground network. It's so scenic when you're between here, you know, very rural. It just doesn't seem like London Underground, even more rural say than the Metropolitan Line beyond Rickmansworth. So right, time to get back on train. So here we are, we're back at Northfield. We had a very interesting trip up and down the line behind Class 47. As carriages are there, the loco has now been uncoupled, running round, ready to take the train back up to Ongar. This is a nice view of Northfield Station building. Um, I really wish I could have come here though when it was still part of London Underground. It must have been, there was just one track through here and the lattice footbridge you see today, there was a concrete one which I think had concrete cancer and unfortunately had to be demolished but it's been replaced with this one which probably gives it more the feeling of how the station would have been in its pre-London underground days. Now here this was the only level crossing, public level crossing on the London underground. It's not even for roads, it's a bridle path. So you can see it says sign there it says public bridleway. It goes off into the countryside. But as I said I'd like to have seen it here in the days when it was still part of London Underground, well, sort of got my wish to come true. The London Underground train here, which is really nice to see, just to give that nod to the fact it was part of London Underground network. Also here, something completely different, another industrial tankage, and I think it's another one built by Hawthorne Leslie, so it's like a larger cousin of Isabel who was working the breakdown lines. And there's a few other interesting things up there. You can probably just see the thumper sitting there, number 205, 205. There's also a peak, class 20, and another DMU. I'm going to now cross what was the only public level crossing on the London Underground. It goes this way. There is also a public footpath further up the line. Um, so, yeah, let's cross the track and get a better view of the London Underground carriage. And you can see the carriages up there, and the DMU is just beyond the trees. So, um, I'm now going to find my way round to the front of the station to get the bus back to Epping and head back to Central London. So it's been a really great day, really enjoyed it here Epping Ongar Railway. Um, I have to come back and have a gala on perhaps. So um, there's the bus, oh, there's the 47, um, and there is a bus as well. So yeah, it looks like my bus is here, so from class 47 to the bus. It's um, time for me to go. So yeah, thank you very much to Epping on Goro. It's been a great day, I really enjoyed it. And if you're ever you know, in London and you wanna come out, jump on the central line, you can get the bus to come here so you don't even need to take your car. You can have a great day out on the Epping on Goro Railway. So 
Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends, etc. And goodbye.